Well, leaders of the world's seven wealthiest economies have gathered in the German state of Bavaria for the annual G7 summit. The focus of this meeting, the war in Ukraine, while other issues like trade and climate adaptation are also being discussed alongside. Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, addressed virtually the G7 leaders earlier today, where he called for more military support and asked the leaders to help end the war before 2023. The gathering has been marked by a show of unity and closeness among the seven leaders. The host, Germany, has also extended an invitation to five partner nations to take part in the meeting, among them being India. Discussing all the topics that are on the agenda, especially staying united in supporting the Ukraine against the Russian aggression. And uh, we understood that the policies of all our countries are very much aligned. And this is, I think, the good message that we are taking tough decisions, that we are also cautious, that we will help the Ukraine as much as is possible, but that we also avoid that there will be a big conflict between Ukraine. Russia and NATO and this is what is of essence to be tough and thinking about the necessities of, uh, of the time we are living in. Ahead of the meeting, wild powers agreed to ban gold imports from Russia. Discussions are also being held to put a price cap on Russian oil imports and fresh sanctions on Russia's defense sector. In between diplomatic parleys, the G7 leaders were seen enjoying a light moment when they took a dig at Russian President Vladimir Putin. So I think everybody came to the G7 in Germany really hearing a lot about Ukraine fatigue, the anxieties of other countries around the world about the continuing war, the effect on food prices, on, on energy prices. And what's really struck me in the last couple of days has been the, the amazing consistency of uh, our, our resolve, uh, the continuing unity of the, the G7. Ahead of the meeting, wild powers agreed to ban gold imports from Russia. Discussions are also being held to put a price cap on Russian oil imports and fresh sanctions on Russia's defense sector. We also know that uh, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky addressed virtually the G7 leaders earlier today where he called for more military support and urged the leaders to help end the war before 2023. The gathering has been marked by a show of unity and closeness among the seven leaders. The host Germany has also extended an invitation to five partner nations to take part in the meeting, among them being India. And we are also eyeing the NATO meeting in Madrid, which will begin in the next two days. And some of these leaders are also discussing the Ukraine-Russia war and how it is, you know, dominating some of the talks in this summit. My name is Eric Njoka. You are watching We On Wild Is One. This news continues from America with Simon Marks. Well, thanks very much indeed. And I am delighted to say that we are now joined by We On's correspondent Susan Terrani in New York, who's been observing events at the uh, G7 summit. Uh, Susan, how complicated is it for President Biden to navigate uh, the G7 and then the NATO summit in Madrid, given that shortly before he left the United States, of course, uh, we saw that Supreme Court decision, which we're going to talk about later in the programme, uh, on abortion. Uh, President Biden likes to say that the US has shared values with G7 members, but it was notable over the weekend that a couple of them, uh, Emmanuel Macron of France and John 
Justin Trudeau of Canada certainly didn't seem to think that those shared values extended uh, particularly far at the moment. Right. President Biden, uh, and it's not only the president, but uh, G7 members really are struggling right now to try to find a solution, uh, not only uh, to uh, Putin's invasion of Ukraine, and their efforts have really not been able uh, to stop Putin from his ongoing invasion, but they're also trying uh, to really tackle uh, the economic hardship that that invasion and other issues uh, have put on the international communities, on their countries as well. And it does come at a time when President Biden is not particularly popular, not only among um, other leaders that he's sitting at the table with, but among his own people here in the United States as well. So yes, there are a lot of problems to address, but many analysts believe that perhaps the best way that the United States, and to the most part, maybe the allies as well, uh, can push an agenda forward and maybe have some sort of success during G7, and then we can talk about NATO a little bit later, is that they can sort of frame this meeting as a support for the UN uh, Charter, a non-intervention agenda, a sovereignty uh, framework agenda, if you may, as a opposed to sort of an agenda that's um, uh, focused on democracy versus autocracy, because that way, you know, um, first of all, more countries will join in. And second of all, you know, um, maybe perhaps the president, not only because of issues facing here at home, but also because, you know, let's not forget, he also has an upcoming trip uh, to a country like Saudi Arabia. He'll sort of be immune to um, criticism regarding that as well. And more countries perhaps will join in and be more comfortable in, um, you know, having an alliance not only um, in the situation of Russia where they won't be able, uh, they won't be forced to take sides, but also in, uh, uh, in dealing with China as well. OK, Susan, uh, stay with us. We're going to come back to you later on the broadcast to discuss uh, the latest on the abortion ruling. But I want to go to Bavaria itself now uh, and to Weon's Sidant Sebel, who is uh, there observing the G7 summit. Uh, and Sidant, give us an update. Uh, how has the day gone so far and what lies ahead? Uh, well, in terms of uh, the two key focus areas, first has been the message by President Zelensky. Almost two hours uh, he spent with uh, the G7 leaders virtually uh, talking about and requesting for air uh, defense missile system for which uh, it seems that United States uh, is working on a package, something that uh, the US NSA has just uh, said in a briefing. Uh, secondly, of course, is uh, the outreach summit where leaders from the five countries uh, when it comes to uh, India, Indonesia, Senegal, South Africa and Argentina are participating. The Indian Prime Minister has participated in the first session and has uh, had talked about his uh, focus areas but also number of bilaterals he is having. So it has been a packed day so far uh, at the G7 site. Uh, but also we can expect in next few hours focus on the key outcomes, uh, especially when it comes to Indian Prime Minister's engagement uh, with the Indonesian president. Remember, Indonesia is the chair of the G20 and uh, India will be the next chair of G20. So both sides will be keen that there are engagements and both sides can work together uh, on how to make sure that there is a successful G20 uh, summit both this year and next year, given we know that the West is not very keen uh, to have the uh, the Russian president on board at the summit. So a lot of things on the annual, on the day two of uh, the G7 uh, summit, uh, uh, but focus will be on the outcomes, especially what the G7 leaders can do in terms of delivery uh, to Ukraine and in terms of messaging to Moscow. Sidan Sibel, live for us at the G7 Summit in Bavaria. Thank you very much indeed for that update.